nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, hello everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier. I am here with you at with this episode of a speed podcasting. Uh, it's a new thing that we're trying to do. Please do let us know what you think about it. It's just about uh, 15 minutes, just hitting on a quick subject and moving forward. Of course, your questions are always important and valuable to us. We're always looking forward to hearing from you, and I'm looking over on YouTube, and I'm looking over... Uh, on my podcast to be able to see if there's any questions as we go. So please do let me know. Uh, some people may be aware we had done a podcast on Facebook. We do it live every Saturday from 12 until 1.30. And uh, we had a great episode there. Talked to a lot of people covering a lot of issues. But I screwed up. I messed up because I did not finish the thought. I was talking about corruption and deception that comes from a lot of our political leaders. I was talking at the state level, at the federal level, and I forgot to mention the local level. So let me do a quick recap. And by the way, this is going to take about 15 minutes. I have a clock and I'm going to be on it. So this won't take that long, hopefully. Well, depending on your questions, of course, it may take a little longer, but my clock is going in. We started off uh, talking about a little bit of the deception with uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the representative in New York on the state level, when she was talking about the Green Deal, which actually is going to cost approximately $6.5 trillion when you add everything all together. Uh, so that was a big deception. We talked a little bit in addition about uh, Diane, Senator Dianne Feinstein and her efforts the woman who has no idea about gun safety and her effort to mislead people both by lying about events that have actually happened that affected the lives of so many people uh, just to get an emotional reaction so that she was able to come out and get uh, and take away the ability of people to have their Second Amendment rights, which is a bad thing. And we disagree with all of that. In addition, we also mentioned... Mm, uh, state, uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and her lie, when she lied to the public, she came out, asked people to vote for her, guaranteed them, promised, looked in a camera and spoke to her constituents and said she was going to be running for her full term. As it turns out, she's opening an office in Troy, New York to run for president, just as it was expected, just like everyone knew, just like she lied. So again, we saw lie after lie. We've seen lie after lie after lie in January in a week and a half of government going on, and it gets worse. So that's the federal, that's the state, and here goes local politics. Because it's it, what we're seeing is a top-down effort, a, a process where we're going from the very top down and down and now down to the local level. And in particular, for people who are not aware, I live in the southern tier of New York in the Broome County, uh, the Binghamton region. And this is in reference to the Binghamton City Council. And this is how, this is why we need to be aware of what's going on in our politics. Because what starts at one level continues all the way through in our politics. And it's terrifying. And it affects every single one of us. When we see the leadership at the top of whichever party, doesn't really matter. In this case, we're talking about Democrats. But when we see them lie and do deceptive acts, it means that every other level under them say, well, it's okay. I can get away with that. It's all right. That's what my party is doing. That's what they expect me to do. And that's why we wind up in situations like we have right now, that at the very local level in Binghamton, the city council for the city of Binghamton, we have a brand new councilman, Councilman Dan Livingston, and already he has engaged in activities that have brought in ethics violations, multiple violations. And what you're seeing here is an article at my website, the mvos.com, talking about this. Now, this is not something that I just made up. It's not my personal opinion. It is a fact. This is documented. We've got FOIA 
um, for people who don't know, it's the Freedom of Information Act documentation about what he did and how he did it. Now, let me tell you what he did. Um, it was the first meeting for the city council. Dan Livingston gets sworn in. He goes to the first meeting. And what he decides to do on his own is he sets up a camera, a web camera that no one knows about. And he starts recording all of the members as soon as they walk in, pass uh, through the meeting, and after that. So he's got private uh, conversations of individuals who have no idea that they're being recorded, as well as the public meeting, and then again, more private conversations by these individuals. This is something that's insane. If I did that to you, if I was in, think about it, when you go into your workplace, someone's recording you, you don't know about it, and you're having a conversation, and they're recording it so they can put it on YouTube without your information. That's bad. That is a absolute ethics violation. And this is not the first time. He's already been reprimanded in November for even more uh, violations of ethics, assuming power that he does not have, misrepresenting his position to the public. And that's what this is, a misrepresentation of his position to the public. And it's a violation of trust. Remember, when we work in government, anyone who's working in government has to work with other individuals. You have to work together. You have to be able to have conversations with people. And how can you have a conversation with someone when the very first thing that you have to say is, good morning, Dan, how are you doing? By the way, am I being recorded? I mean, that takes away trust. And I, I understand this very much. I'm a political commentator. I've been doing it for 12 years. Okay, I understand very clearly the need to be on the record and off the record, to be able to have a conversation, to be able to talk to people, to speak with politicians about all the issues that are going on. Sometimes you have to talk privately. Sometimes you have to talk off the record. I understand that. But it's very hard to do anything like that when you have a politician who is secretly recording people and their private conversations, not the public meeting, because that is New York state law. He could publish that. But again, this was all done in secrecy. And it's really upsetting because this is the same person, Dan Livingston, is a councilman who's screaming about transparency. Transparency, transparency, transparency. He's going on and on about that. He's saying he wants to be very transparent. He wants to make the government, the city government, transparent. But that same man denied any of his colleagues, anyone in that room that came in or out that was part of the meeting or before or after it, he denied them transparency. In fact, he violated their privacy. And that's really sad. And he did it on purpose. Okay, the only reason why anyone even knows about this is they accidentally found the device at the end of the meeting and said, what's that? And at that moment, only at that moment, did he decide to say, well, you know, I've been recording everybody secretly. I mean, this is almost to the level, it's almost like someone putting a camera in a bathroom and quite honestly, you don't know. He could be walking down the halls and recording people who would know. And that's a question that we have to ask, especially for constituents. Is that the way they want to be represented? Do they, can they be well represented by their uh, constituents, so, excuse me, by their elected official, someone they elected to be able to speak on their behalf, to hold meetings on their behalf, to try and make deals with businesses and uh, arrange for tax cuts and create jobs. And they're counting on this person to be able to have conversations, deep, serious conversations sometimes private conversations with various individuals that are interacting with the government and other members of the government, and none of them can trust him because he, the very first thing he did was secretly record people. And I have to tell you, when you're out there and you're secretly recording politicians and other individuals without their knowledge to be able to put it onto any kind of media without their knowledge, without their access, without anyone being able to have any oversight on it. He's doing this all on his own. He made the decision. He has control of it. He has the tapes. And when you're using that, you have to say, that's pretty nefarious. The question comes up at that moment. Is this something that is being done for political gain? That he is using this to either manipulate someone's, and not even necessarily him. Who is he giving the information to? 
Can you imagine any politician? They're out there. They're giving the tape over to some uh, other political party so that they can chop up someone's audio and make any politician sound like they said something they didn't say using their own voice or manipulating the video to try and make it look like someone's doing something that they didn't do. And no one knows because the only person who has possession of the video is Dan Livingston. And Dan Livingston is the only one, Councilman Dan Livingston, is the only one who knows who has access, how it's being used, or why. Again, that brings up the question that this is something that is nefarious. In fact, New York State does recognize that this is a problem, and that's why they have a law, and it's called a public officer law. And there is an ethics violation when you break the trust of both the public and the government uh, then you are in trouble. It's Article 7, uh, Section H. Look it up. And I'll include the link. Uh, and if you go to the uh, to the article itself, you'll see it at the mvos.com. Look up Councilman Livingston's Day 1 Ethics Violations, and you will find the link, and you will find the actual citation where this is an ethics violation because he has blown up the trust of the public. And this is sad. And this is endemic. Look at this. In one day, we're having podcasts and conversations with the public about violations where we've seen politicians lie to the public, misinform the public, uh, you manipulate the public emotionally. And now with Dan Livingston, we're watching them use the idea of transparency to possibly do some nefarious things to try and mislead the public. And to assume he has more power and more capability than he does. To assume that he is the one who controls the information going through city government. To assume that he is the only champion of truth and justice and transparency in city council, which is an absolute lie. Because, in fact, city council has been working on making themselves more transparent than uh, before he even got there. He's, uh, he's Johnny come lately on the issue and he's trying to make it seem like, if you listen to his article and his answer about why he did this, is he's trying to be transparent. But, okay, then why don't you speak to your colleagues? Why don't you ask them questions? Why don't you find out what's going on? Rather than just assuming the very worst of your colleagues and saying that they're inherently saying that they're evil people or they're up to no good and that this is the only way to show the truth, which is not accurate at all. Now, you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to believe me. Look at the article. It has the evidence there. These are all facts. It is my interpret. This is my conclusion on the facts. But the fact is he did have ethics violations. He did secretly record individuals with, for an unknown purpose without anyone having oversight on this, without anyone knowing who has access to the information or how it's being used. He has yet to publicly notify anyone about this. And the sad thing is, I've notified several, I've spoken to many of the local news media, and sadly because, you know, several of the news organizations are statewide, large organizations, they don't deal with a lot of the local issues. That's the problem with news nowadays, which is one of the reasons why we do the No Sound Bites Allowed podcast, to help bring that local news and that local interpretation, the understanding of what's happening at the state and the federal and even the local level, and bring it down so that everyone can understand it because our local news media isn't. And in the few times that they do cover some of these issues that are going on that affect us all, they spend a minute and a half on something that truly deserves way more time. I mean, I'm going as fast as possible because I have a time limit here. And as I said, this is a speed podcasting. We're doing just summary of the issue. Uh, and you can go into the article or you can send us an email, you can send us a tweet, you can send us a message on Facebook or here on YouTube, and we'll be happy to talk more about it. But this is why uh, it's so devastating to see our local news media not covering local issues, because things like this get missed. Now, I'm not saying that Dan Livingston's a bad person. I don't know him. He hasn't spoken to me. And I did give him, oh, there we go. There's my time limit. <laughs> um, and I want to be clear. I did give him the opportunity to speak on the record. I asked him for a quote. Okay, I'm a political commentator. 
I've been I've worked with politicians of every party in eight counties plus in New York State, and I've never once misquoted anyone ever. I make sure I get my facts right. And I did give him the opportunity over 30, he had over 36 hours to make a response, to make a comment. And I spoke with him in person 12, uh, 14 hours before I actually published the article. And it's what, 48, maybe 72 hours before I've actually done this podcast. So he's had an opportunity to respond. He still has not made any comment. And therefore, we're still stuck with this thought. Was this for nefarious reasons? Is he making a mountain out of a molehill? Is he trying to use the issue of transparency to deceive the public? We don't know. What we do know for sure is the one thing we know is that Dan Livingston is, has a history now, a repeated history of, of ethics violations, which is very troubling considering that this is the same person in 2017 who admitted to Spectrum News, a national news service, and Guarantee he spoke to them and stated clearly that he would not only broke election law, but he was happy to do so. He went on to WNBF, a local news station, and confirmed that he would do it again, that he is willing to break the law for his own personal gain. I am troubled by this. Maybe you're not. Local news, and I would suggest to people, check out in your local area as well. I know I'm talking on a national level, but uh, to an audience across the nation, but also check in your local area. Because if your news is like my news, it's controlled at a county level or a state level. And so you're not getting the news that you should be. You're getting news reports that are a minute, minute and a half long. That's not enough. That's not coverage. That's not telling you what's going on and how is it affecting you. I advise you, double check your city council. See if they're doing the right thing. If they're following the rules, and if they are working together for your benefit or for the benefit of a politician or some other nefarious group, because that's important. That's how we make America better. This is what's considered transparency, asking a question about a serious issue and hoping that we can get a better result from that answer and from the uh, interaction. Let's make this, let's talk about this. If you think I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. If you think there's something else, let me know what it is. And as for Councilman Livingston, we again mentioned to him that we are more than willing to put him on, as we have done for many politicians. We will give him as much time as he wishes to answer our questions, to discuss this and any issue that he wishes, as we have done with politicians of all parties for the last 12 years. Um, we're looking forward to hearing from him to understand this better, and we hope for all the constituents that they will see a better resolution and an end to these ethics violations that have been ongoing. And I advise you again, talk to your local news station, talk to your local media, and find out if your local government is following the lead that we see that has happened from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that we've seen with Dianne Feinstein, that we're seeing with Kirsten Gillibrand, and here we are seeing it with Dan Livingston. Let's hope that your government isn't having the same problems. I hope it's isolated to Binghamton, New York, but I don't think so. But with that said, as I said, this is a speed podcast. It's just a brief blast. I look forward to seeing your comments, whether they're here on YouTube, on my Twitter account, on Facebook. You can email me. And if you like this, please donate. Donate a dollar. We'll be happy. It helps keep the lights on. So with that, I thank you. I thank you so much for joining us on a Saturday uh, right after your dinner. I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are great. That's why I'm here and that's why I do it. Go out, have a great Saturday, and we'll talk again.